The Saudis recently pulled back on some of their production, saying this was not a supply issue Correct. in the market. Psychological. Although we pulled some, uh, we pulled out, uh, we reduced our production, and, and still the, the price for oil went down, which shows mm -hmm. conclusively that uh, there's no correlation between what's happening. It's only psychological. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to take a break. <laughs> Unless you want to, you can buy all of our commercial time, and then we'll just keep <laughs> keep going. It wouldn't. Uh... No, no. Well, let's take I, a break. I'll keep my money to invest in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a sneak in a quick break. We still have a lot uh, of ground to cover uh, with Prince Awalid bin Talal, including uh, the kingdom's top stocks, but uh, and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, Squawk Box is coming right back. To our conversation this morning with Prince Awalid bin Talal, who joins us here on set for the hour. Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't ask you about the president's speech regarding <laughs> Israel yesterday and these 1967 borders. Um, people say that politically. He's in very dangerous territory. What did you make of the speech? I think the speech was a continuation of the speech he had in Cairo two years ago. And I think the speech just reaffirmed the U.S. position, said the position since uh, many years ago. And I believe right now the United States needs a strong leadership uh, to, uh, I would not say word impose, but at least to dictate a peace settlement in the Middle East, because without leadership in the United States, we're not going to have peace over there. And that's a, a time bomb. Uh, that has to be resolved uh, very imminently and soon. And I think that the roadmap that the president has established is, all, is only in conformity with the resolution of the UN 242 that uh, was uh, taken uh, after the 1967 war. So I think the president has just restated uh, the position of the United States, and I believe that uh, the Palestinians and the Israelis have to accept it. The, the Palestinians already accepted it a long time before the president's speech. And I hope that now the president, when he meets Netanyahu today, some convincing uh, takes place. Do you think that's possible? He's already said it's indefensible, <coughs> Netanyahu. And Netanyahu went public uh, against the speech of Mr. President. I'm not uh, reading some tweets this morning that he was furious yes, yes. when he first heard what the president I said. I know, it's unfortunate. Uh, but I believe that the United States has a lot of work to do in Israel. And I think uh, that it has to exert a lot of pressure on Israel and the Palestinians also uh, to get the settlement done. I believe that a settlement is possible, not impossible. But I need, it needs strong leadership from President Obama. I hope that all the issues that Obama has on his plate will not have him uh, take his eye out of the main issue and the main time bomb in the Middle East, which is the, uh, the Palestinian-Israeli crisis. Is this something that can start to reach resolution before 2012, uh, before our re-election, or is this a second-term issue for the president? Uh, I hope it is a first-term uh, first uh, issue. issue and not second-term issue, because then if it's second-term issue, then you have to wait another 18 months, your, which is too long. Your Highness, uh, I'm surprised that you would call that the, the primary time bomb in the Middle East right now. In other words, with, with what we're seeing it, with, with some of the unrest uh, and, um, and, you know, even in your, your country itself, obviously, which seems at this point to be immune from some of the other things that we're seeing, yeah. but it, maybe it's related to, to, to the, the Palestinian issue as well, but the, the spring, the, the, if you want to, whatever you want to refer to it as, the Arab Spring seems like a much bigger uh, overall uh, thing to talk about now, that, that maybe, yeah. but maybe it's all related, I yeah. guess. I know. Uh, really, uh, the Palestinian issue has been going on for the uh, last right. 60 years or so, and uh, uh, the uprising in certain Arab countries like Egypt and Tunis and now in uh, Libya, Syria, and, and Yemen, has nothing to do with really the Palestinian crisis. Right. Uh, the, the crisis over in these countries are very much indigenous and very much uh, targeted to one objective, to have more involvement in, their, in the decision-making process of their nations. Uh, it was not anti-America, it was not anti-Israel, it was not pro-Islamic. It was very much uh, nationalized and localized to, to, to each country. I mean, that seems more... Yeah. I don't know, more imminent, more pressing, more, it almost seems like, it's it, hard to believe anything could take precedence over the Palestinian situation, but it almost seems like I'd be thinking more how to, you know, what, how to manage that uh, situation than, than, than the other situation. Well, no, I, mean, I mean, both are important. I mean, it's like in the United States, you have, for example, the, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, the, the budget deficit, and you have the issue of, uh, of uh, managing uh, Iran, for example. I mean, they're both issues have to be managed simultaneously. You can't just finish one issue and then and they tackle other issue one after the other, back to back. Mm -hmm. You need to f manage things uh, uh, together. And I think President speech yesterday talked about the uprising and then managed the issue of the Israeli-Palestinian crisis. But, uh, the president's see... speech, though, was pretty specific. He called mm -hmm. on the leaders of Libya, Syria, and Bahrain to stop these brutal crackdowns. He went back and mentioned both Cairo and Tunis and other mid Middle Eastern governments, uh, telling them that they need to embrace democratic transitions. 
He didn't mention Saudi Arabia, but there have been a lot of tensions because of how active our government has gotten in terms of uh, pushing their own agenda in some of these issues. What, what's the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia right now? Yeah, I think the president's emphasis yesterday was on Tunis and Egypt uh, because the revolution took place over there and the presidents were toppled. And right now, these countries are facing some economic crisis. Foreign reserves have been depleted, foreign investment is not going over there anymore, tourism has uh, collapsed completely. So the United States, Saudi Arabia, World Bank and IMF are working together right now to help and facilitate the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the mission in this country, in these countries to go back uh, into, into track by, by jump-starting their economies. Your, your Highness, you've, you've, oh, you're on record saying that an internal um, <coughs> solution for each country is, is the best way to, to handle things. Um, and I, I, I think that you were saying that maybe that's the way the president uh, said it should, uh, it should happen as well. I've, you're also on record saying that in Saudi Arabia, King Abdullah is very popular, royal family, very popular. But also recently some, some grants from the king, what, $150 billion, whatever it was. Um, will internal reforms come quickly enough to satisfy Saudi youth, that, that, that maybe 150 billion is, is not going to take the place of jobs or a future and everything else. Will, will you be able to manage that situation? Hey, let me explain that. It's a good question. Let me explain to you uh, the situation in Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know, there, there was a the social contract and political contract in Saudi Arabia between the ruling family and the, the subjects of the king. Clearly, the, the, that, that, that first social contract was uh, restudied and a new. Uh, uh, laws were enacted, and they are very uh, one-on-one -on -one business uh, matters that you understand it very well. For example, so, uh, part of this package that, that, that the king established in Saudi Arabia was um, to enact unemployment benefits. You imagine Saudi Arabia didn't have any unemployment benefits. Saudi Arabia didn't have any minimum wage. This, this was established also. Uh, Saudi Arabia has a big shortage uh, in housing for the middle class. So the king initiated a, a program to build 500,000 units in the coming five to ten years. So the social uh, contact between Saudi Arabia and uh, uh, the Saudi Arabian government and uh, the subjects had been renegotiated. And this wa was, was uh, received very favorably in, in, in the nation across, across the board, with some other uh, issues that manage the, the social fabric in Saudi Arabia. Uh, having said that, clearly on the political front, uh, I, read, I wrote an op-ed in the New York Times, I'm sure you read. Uh, we, I said that any country in the Arab world, inc including Saudi Arabia, to, it have to adapt into what's happening around us. It's very important to give more say to the people in Saudi Arabia and have them participate in the, in the decision-making process, decision process. For example, like having elections, for example, to at least uh, our, our shura, which is really equivalent to the parliament or mm -hmm. congress in the United States. Saudi Arabia's situation is very different than, than what's happening around us, really. But, we have a stable regime over there. But, but others would say that, that some of the stability has been uh, accomplished by, uh, I don't know, uh, supporting uh, a, a type of Wahhabi Islam and, and kind of the critics would say that that relationship between the royal family and, and, and that part of, uh, of the religion is, is, is not positive and has caused some problems. Do you yeah. see backing away from that and being more, uh, more democratic and, and accomplishing it that way yeah, rather yeah. than? Yeah. You know, they're not mutually exclusive. You still can be Islamic yet open up because uh, Islam has a shura. Shura was established 1,400 years ago, you know, years before the Magna Carta. The Magna Carta was established in UK and before it came to the United States. So our religion, Islam, which is really uh, our constitution, Saudi Arabia, is based on Islam. And Islam has Shura. Shura really is democracy. So right now we need to apply that a bit more and uh, have, have the people participate in our system more. And I'm for that all the way. And you think you can do it quickly enough? You think that these, this will come and, and there won't be a, a similar thing happening? In, no, no. Inside. Rest assured that Saudi Arabia's situation is very different. Because look at the, the, the map. To our northwest, northeast, southeast, southwest, west and east, you have Christ all of, across the board. Right. And you know, I mean, uh, when the call for to have demonstrations in Saudi Arabia on the 11th of March failed completely. It shows that the people of Saudi Arabia are rallying around the country. Having said that, we will not take our people for granted. We will do our best to really accommodate their needs and requests and have them participate in, our, in the system. We talked about relationship between the United States and other countries regarding Pakistan. Somebody uh, in Pakistan recently said, if we didn't know about bin Laden, we're a failed state. And if we did know, we're a rogue state. So did they know? Uh, and there's no doubt that for uh, bin Laden to stay in, in, in that city, uh, for five years without having some elements, not necessarily in the government, but at least some elements in the intelligence or the army, not having to know that he's there, uh, it doesn't make sense at all. Having said that, 
the fact that Bilad has been taken care of and thrown in the sea, and hopefully now some sharks ate him already, uh, the world <laughs> feels a lot better, at least psychologically. Is it, is it um, significant for us as Americans, apart from our uh, thirst for justice, do you think it changes the nature of global terrorism? Uh, it is a psychological blow, no doubt about that, uh, for militarism and for Al-Qaeda. But I don't believe that uh, ter terrorism risks are, are over. Because, uh, you know, his, uh, his control uh, on, on, on the Al-Qaeda uh, has diminished substantially since when he was isolated years ago. Uh, so uh, all those groups that are working now in a decentralized manner uh, all over the world in the five continents are still functioning. So the fire of terrorism is far from over, although a big blow has been uh, given to Al-Qaeda and international terrorism by the uh, successful execution of bin Laden. Uh, uh, do you think that Saudi Arabia needs to step up in a more uh, forceful way to, to try to stem some of Iran's intentions in, in, in the area? Do you, do you think the United States has been tough enough with, with Iran? Yeah, I'm glad you said that because Saudi Arabia is in a fight right now, uh, a political fight with Iran. We are trying to, to, to stop their, 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 their movement uh, to the Gulf region. And I think uh, Saudi Arabia's involvement in Bahrain is misunderstood in, in the West, especially United States. We send the, the 1,000 troops with the GCC people, uh, group is to, uh, to support the back uh, office uh, or the back uh, uh, political uh, office in, 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 in Bahrain by securing the, the ports, the airports, and the infrastructure, whereby we freed the army and the police over there to manage the, those small number of renegades in Bahrain that are, that the loyalty is, is to, 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 to Iran. Although we have 50% of the population, they are Shiites, but the majority of them are mainstream with the king, and who is very much loved over there. Uh, so only a small group of people, maybe 100,000 or less, that are really have the loyalty to Iran. And those are being isolated and, uh, and, and, uh, by, by, by the, the Bahraini regime. I just wonder who, who steps up to the plate if not, if, if not Saudi Arabia. There's kind of a void, oh, yes, isn't yes. there? No, no, no. Saudi Arabia filled the void uh, very clearly and eminently and swiftly. We've done, we played our role very well. I mean, United States and Saudi Arabia uh, are together in that, in, in, in fighting uh, the tide and fighting the movement of Iran into a very dangerous location, which is the Gulf region. Do you think we cut the <clears throat> Mubarak loose too quickly? I heard a lot about that. You know, at the end of the day, the Egyptian people decided that Mubarak would, would need, needs to be out, period. I mean, let's say United States decided to keep, uh, to keep Mubarak. What could have done? When you have two million people in the street, there's no way you can stop uh, that movement. <laughs> no way at all. So I think United States' position was good. Obama was prudent by, by having this wait and see situation because if the demonstrations failed and, and, and uh, Mubarak had been successful, he had to deal with it for the next uh, years or so. Uh, but you must have watched that very closely. What you just said, you can't stop it once there's that many people. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean hopefully that's not the future of Saudi Arabia. No, it is, uh, hopefully it's not. And I think it's not because uh, any, lesson, any, any country in the Middle East did not take a lesson from what happened in Egypt and Tunis and what's happening right now in Libya, Syria and Yemen. They'll never get it. If they don't get it right now, no country will get it. I had one question before we go to break about <laughs> politics here in the U.S. As a foreign investor, uh, who do you think will run against Obama and do you think they can beat him? Yeah, first of all, uh, 18 months uh, in the United States is, is too long, sometimes two months too long. <laughs> uh, uh, clearly, the ratings of President Obama has jumped and uh, increased dramatically after the, uh, the, Obama, after the uh, Bin Laden uh, uh, execution. Uh, clearly, right now, the Republican Party is still deciding who will be its, uh, its candidate. You know, you have Huckabee in and then out, you have Trump in and out, and you have now newcomers are coming. It's still a developing story. I think 18 months is too long in U.S. politics. And, and nobody that you would like to see run against Obama, or would, you, would your support be for the president? Uh, you know, I don't interfere in internal U.S. politics at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we like 18 months because we cover it every day. Like every day, it gives us uh, <laughs> stuff. We like, don't we start? We do four years. We, yeah, we, we, do four, we do four years. Yeah. Yeah. You began in, in uh, just uh, the <laughs> 6th or 7th of yeah. November. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, we have to take a quick break right now. When Squawk comes back, we have more of our conversation with Prince Awalid bin Talal. He, again, is the largest individual foreign investor in the United States. GM is one of his most recent investments here. So we're going to talk to him about what other names he might be watching right now. That's coming up when Squawk Box comes right back.